In this video, I will be looking at how to create this foam holder, which is a sheet metal product from a 2D drawing. In this case, I'm using the drawing that has been generated of this model. And it could also be uh, one of the sketches that you made. So I'm just going to copy this over to a new file. And let's uh, paste it and move it somewhere to the origin. And let's place it with this point here at the origin. So I'm moving from this end to the origin, like that. And then I want to make this drawing on to the front view. And for this, I use remap C plane and zoom extends all. Okay, so let's lock this layer. And we'll start drawing out the shape in front view. And when working with sheet metal, as explained in the lessons, we will work from the inside surfaces because those are leading for the dimensions of our sheet metal. So let's start with the outer part of the design. I'll do that on this layer. And I'll just trace over the shape here with a polyline using only end object snap. like that and as you can see the final part is 50 millimeters and the inside is 48 so i'm going to extrude this over 48 millimeters so let's do so we can do that from the solid menu straight extrusion you can also do this from its mid plane by uh, using the both sides options and then it's of course 48 divided by 2 and that gives us the 48 millimeters of total width so that is already the basis for our sheet metal piece and we only need the three sides here for our shape so let's um, extract these from the model and then we can delete the extrusion that we just made or we'll use a slightly different color so you better see the um, better see the colors of the isocurves um, by the way, my inside surfaces are red, and that is because I've changed the color of the inside of surfaces uh, in the Rhino options under display modes. You can find it under shaded, and then setting a single color for all back faces. And another thing I changed is to make sure that in object surfaces in my shaded view i use a single color for all naked edges so once i have this i have these separate surfaces and i keep them as such for making the making an offset surf uh, to the outside solid and deleting input Okay, so this is basically the first part already finished. Uh, the only thing left is to make that cutout. But we're going to do that later on. First, let's make the inner part. Let's do that on this layer. So activating layer 2. And let's hide layer 1. And going back to my front view. So again, I'm tracing the inside of the part. And although it ends over here, let's make it all the way up to this edge here to make it slightly more complicated. 
So using intersection here. By the way, I uh, hovered over um, this endpoint, then pressing tab to fix the direction and then finding the intersection with that line. Going to this end and back to this one. This gives me that profile and I'll extrude that also from center. So again from solid, extrude planar curves, straight. And this one needs to be um, not 48 but 46 millimeters as it's going to be fitting between the walls of the first part we created. 23 in both directions. Uh, for this part, we will be using these sides. Um, the bottom we don't need, so we delete them. And we will repeat with the surface, so selecting surface with cell surf, offsetting them with offset surf. And that's the basis for the next part. First of all, let's take a look at how to create uh, the, these tabs here. And for that, I will make some helping lines. Turning on project. And we'll make an extrusion of those lines after exploding them. Let's hide the drawing for now. So exploding, we have all separate lines. Selecting those four and making extrusion. In both directions extending through the part. And let's split this one with boolean split. So I'm using these surfaces. And you can see the split uh, failed. And that sometimes happens because um, it cannot find a complete intersection. So let's first try to split this with boolean split using only these surfaces. And that seems to work. And now do the same with this surface. It still uh, fails to split. So when that happens, I just extend this surface by increasing the size in all directions. And then repeating that Boolean split. And now it does work. And then I can delete my surfaces. Since this is the same on this side, I can just delete that one and mirror this over, over the x-axis. That's also the reason why I prefer to have my part centered when it is uh, symmetrical. So using mirror, using the x-axis, of course, making sure it copies on. And then using the x-axis. I do see some issues here. Seems not completely uh, well done with the Boolean split. So this uh, server seems to be split or inverted, I have to say. Let's see if I can fix it by exploding it and joining it back together. And that seems to work. So exploding and joining. And this is exactly also Another good reason to uh, use different colors for back faces so that you can spot those mistakes uh, earlier in the process. 
So for now, selecting the curves with cell curve, deleting, let's bring back the uh, first part that we created. As I mentioned, uh, this part I extended a little bit too long into the part just to make it slightly more complicated uh, to give you an idea how to uh, solve that kind of things in your model. So this one needs to be moved, but not simply by moving it. Let's make it slightly darker here. Okay, so not by simply moving it uh, one millimeter this way, uh, because as you can see, you still have slight intersection here because it's a tilted face. Uh, if this was perfectly vertical, we could just move it a millimeter to the left. But since this is under an angle, we need to uh, move it in a direction perpendicular to that surface so how to do that efficiently well there are a couple of ways but uh, probably the most easy way to do it is to make sure project is on and use intersection and then use the move tool to move it from this to this intersection by using shift. As you can see, it's a slightly more di than one millimeter distance that we need to move, 1.004. So now that, that this is fixed, we still need to fix the uh, intersection with, uh, with this part. So I'm using scale 1D for that. So from this end projected to that end up to that one and we can do the same for this part and uh, let's use a different method for that so turning on solid edit points with solid pt on and then moving these points from this end to that end now we can switch off our first part again And that looks uh, good. Um, now let's make the cutouts in the front. So this one, it's not perfectly uh, readable from this image, but uh, the cutout is uh, 14 millimeters wide. It's a round cut. And then this straight line is nine millimeters and then again round cut with a diameter of 14 millimeters for this i will use a new c plane which is uh, located right at this surface so again making sure i can see my iso curves a little bit better um, but well, let's do that differently. Let's use another option in our display mode preferences. I'm going to shade it. And then use a different color for isocurves. Uh, let's make it black. Okay. And then we can also better see the difference between edges and isocurves. So aligning my C-plane to this object with C-plane to object. And then making a round hole on this surface with a diameter of 14 millimeters. Depth is set to one, that's okay. And snapping to the midpoint of this edge 
like so. Then going back to my top view, top seaplane, now turning on seaplane to this face. Let's do that by three points. So seaplane three point. Make sure project is off. Midpoint, end and mid. And now I'm going to make a line from the mid here with a length of nine. And I'm making an offset of that line in both directions. Distance is going to be seven. And we want to have a round cap. And then we can use that to uh, make a wire cut. And there we have our cutout. Let's delete the lines. Next, going back to our top view. And let's have a look at cutting out the backside. So again, using C plane to object and making a round hole. At this midpoint, and let's do the same on this face. As you can see, it's slightly shorter there. And that's because if you look in the side view, let's make it slightly darker again. And you can see it will touch the uh, ground surface with that point. And this is tilting up slightly. But we want to keep uh, the, the whole simple. So we will have a little bit of difference between the two holes in terms of alignment. But I think that's fine for sheet metal product like this. So again, uh, C plane to this object. Round hole. on this surface at this endpoint, midpoint. And here you can see that we have a slight overlap here, but that should be fine. So that uh, concludes the first part of this uh, video. In the next one, I will show you how to convert this back into 2D drawings based on the inner surfaces of these models.